And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about making pictures with data. I also think of this as playing with data and maybe you'll see why in a little bit. I feel a little awkward today because I have a great big Band-Aid on my forehead. Um, and I was gonna tell a joke about Band-Aids, but I figured it would be hard to pull off. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so visual analytics. So I wanna talk a little bit briefly about what I mean when I say visual analytics. And then I'm gonna talk about um, what data visualization is and how those two things are similar and different. And then I'm gonna give a data demo. Now, I can't actually give a demo today. I was gonna give a demo in a program called Tableau to show you what it's like to play with data. So I have some screenshots and some pictures and I'll talk you through it. <clears throat> and then hopefully if I'm good, I'll have plenty of time for questions and hopefully you'll have plenty of questions. And so let's see, where do I have to point this to make it work? It worked once. Okay, next slide. Uh oh. Look, there's a little line here. Okay, good, we're back. <clears throat> so visual analytics is the science of analytical reasoning facilitated by interactive displays. Visual analytics combines research from a whole bunch of different fields. And really probably a lot of people say that it got its big funded start around um, the disaster in 9-11 when the World Trade Center fell because um, computer scientists and visual uh, cognitive scientists and people that study data and think about how to analyze things like that came together and they said, well, it, we need all these things together. <clears throat> so visual analytics, uh -oh. is a lot about computers and humans together, right? So it's not just computers, it's not humans. It's a place that intersects those two things, mainly to make things um, interactive, so that's actually one of the fundamental differences between what I would say is um, uh, data visualization and visual analytics, is that it's those two things working together. Next slide, interactive exploration. So, and what we mean when we say exploration is sometimes you have so much data and you know there's interesting stuff in there, but you don't know what even questions to ask about it, right? So if they're looking at a bunch of data to look at something like 9-11, what happened then, they had so much data, they just couldn't figure out how to use it all, how to make sense of it all. So visual analytics is intended in part to explore data. Um, it's useful for developing insights and questions. So if you've got a business case, you've got some sort of big business problem, you've got a lot of data, you're you're sifting through it, you're trying to find something interesting in it. That's what visual analytics is for. Okay, so that's visual analytics. These slides go very slowly. This is more like data visualization. Data visualization is less about being interactive. It's more about static pictures, visualizations of data. These are all just visualization examples to get the point across. One of the great things about data visualization is we can use pictures of data to, to tell a story, to make a point, to communicate. So let's say you get a data science degree and you go work for a company and you found some interesting things in the data and you wanna convince upper management that they shouldn't go buy that other company or they should go buy these other things, right? You wanna come up with pictures that tell the story quickly, effectively, um, so that they can make decisions about them. So I don't want to actually imply that there's a real strong um, separation between data visualization and uh, visual analytics. The point here is just that we have two classes. One is going to start for the first time this coming fall. That's a visual analytics class. And we already have a data visualization class called information visualization on the books. And information visualization is more like this stuff. It's 
slide. <laughs> so here's just a chart that kind of contrasts those two things. But the difference or the distinction between the two is a little bit fuzzy. So in our new class, we're focused on visual analytics. We're using tools like Tableau and Watson Analytics to make interactive systems that enable you to play with massive data sets. The class we already have on the books is data visualization, actually called information visualization. And it uses, it teaches how to use a programming language like R to make static visualizations, and then how to use a design program like Adobe Illustrator to make it beautiful so that it helps tell the story, right? If it's designed well, then people will engage with it. That's the idea. Next slide. So <clears throat> the story I want to tell you today is drawn from a data set from some platform. You might have heard of it. It's called Facebook. And Facebook allows people to buy advertising that targets specific audiences. The data that we have is actually from the 2020 election. Um, uh, and we're focused on Biden and Trump, but we actually have the data from all the candidates that were running uh, before the primaries finished. When I expand all this data out, it's a reasonably good sized data set. It's 41 million rows. It takes up about three and a half gigabytes on my hard drive. Um, and the, the team of researchers here using this data set includes Jenny Stromer Galley, Brian McKernan, Patricia Rossini is in London someplace, and myself. And if you're more interested in, in the Illuminating Project, you can uh, check us out on the website. <clears throat> Next slide. So this is Tableau. So I was going to demo this. So this is the slide version. And you can't see a lot of the text, but that's OK, right? The text isn't super important here. What's important here are these bars. Jay, can you come up here for a second? So I'm asking a friend to come up to stand next to me for a minute. And I want you to notice something. Which one of us is taller? Don't answer that. You knew. You knew as soon as he came up here. Go ahead. Yeah. Humans make comparisons. And we do it so blindingly fast that we do it before we even realize we've made comparisons. And visual analytics and data visualization take advantage of the fact that humans make comparisons. Humans find patterns very, very easily, and we make comparisons. OK, so in these bars, oh, wait, go back. In these bars, um, there's a couple things I want to point out. So there's a set of bars on the top. That's Joseph Biden's spending for different age groups. And the bars on the bottom, that's Donald Trump's spending for different age groups. And the age groups. The first shortest bar is 18 to 24. The next bar is 24 to 34, so on and so forth, until the last bar is um, money that was spent on ads for people over 65. And we can look at these and instantly get some insight. One of them is Trump spent more money targeting ads on Facebook. And the other is they targeted different age groups, right? And you. Like, I didn't even have to say that out loud. You already know that. But I'll say out loud that Trump typically targeted older people and Biden typically uh, targeted younger people. Next slide. Now, this is Tableau. <clears throat> and what's cool about Tableau is you can actually just drop and drag and drop your variables and it will instantly update the picture. And even though I have 41 million rows in here, which if you're not very familiar with data, that's a pretty good size data set. Would you say it's a good, it's a good size data set? So, um, so I just drag this and drop it and it updates and creates the picture quickly. The reason why that's important, not because I'm, I'm not trying to brag that I have great big data, it's that <clears throat> The thing about visual analytics is that it's interactive. And if the system's slow, then it doesn't feel as interactive. That interactiveness is what gives you a sense of intimacy with the data that helps you find insights. OK, now this data is a little more complex. I've still got Biden on the top <clears throat> and Trump on the bottom. The top set of bars that are a light blue, that's what was spent on women. 
and then the dark blue is men. So I've got Biden's women and men and Trump's women and men. Now we did some of the stuff that, um, that Jeff Saltz was talking about with this data. We did something called automated classification where we coded a bunch of, a bunch of these ads for what kind of message it was. And then we ran algorithms to tag all the data so that we knew what every single kind of ad was. We've got three types. We've got ads that just try to engage with people. We've got ads that try to ask people for money. And we've got ads that encourage people to go out and vote. And that pretty consistently covers most of the things that um, that our political candidates are doing with ads on Facebook, okay? Now, again, we can look at these pictures and pretty quickly get some insights. Um, so for example, I would say Biden spent a lot more on women than men. I would say Trump is pretty close to about the same and Trump um, is, targeting men kind of more evenly, but he's targeting older men more than younger men. Biden is kind of the opposite. He's, tar he's targeting more younger people than older people, and he's really trying to engage with women. <clears throat> what else can I tell you? I can tell you that, um, yeah, by, that Trump's got this more, uh, he's much more focused on older people. And the other thing I'd say about this is, yeah, that's enough. This comes up really fast and it's important that it comes up fast, like I said. Okay, next slide. Now, so the other data that we get from Facebook is where these ads are targeted. Okay, so we have multiple dimensions, right? We've got where it's targeted, we've got whether it's male and female, so we've got gender and we've got age. In this particular one, I've got maps of, uh, which kind of advertisement, whether it was engagement, fundraising, or voting, for which candidates? It's darker green if it's more spending, and it's lighter green if it's less spending. Okay, so one thing I noticed right off the bat, Trump is on the bottom, and the darkest state in all three pictures is Florida. Does anybody remember the 2020 election? <laughs> Okay, so Trump did win Florida. Um, interestingly, Biden's got a more even distribution of how he's spending money, but he is still spending pretty heavy in Florida. Um, Biden is covering Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, Michigan, pretty heavily in addition to Florida. What states did he win? I think all of those. Did he win North Carolina? He didn't win that one, right? So he got pretty good. He, he had a different kind of a strategy. Now, Facebook isn't the only place that they're advertising. So these numbers are just about, you know, how he's engaging on social media platforms. Um, there's some other insights that we can get from this. If we were in an interactive environment, we could, draw, we could roll the mouse over each state and it would give us more detail. That's called drilling down. And drilling down is important because it helps us get detail. And in fact, we could hook up ads to an interface and you could drill down, you could click on Florida. It would bring up the collection of ads that, um, that showed up in Florida. And you could drill down and say, show me the ads that Biden, um, targeted for women between the ages of 24 and 34 in Florida. And if we had enough detail, we could actually see it per county, right? So we can really, that's data science, right? This is the high level aggregated view and the ability to drill down helps us tell stories. In fact, we could click on um, voting for Pennsylvania for Biden and voting for Pennsylvania for Trump. And we could say, how are these ads similar or different, right? And that's, what, that's the comparison. That's what humans do really well. There's some other observations here. Um, if we look at the difference between fundraising and voting, Biden is asking Californians for money, but he's not asking them to vote. Do you know why? He already knows he's won that state, it's California. 
It's like one of the more liberal states in the country. He doesn't have to tell them to go out and vote. Of course, they're going to vote. <clears throat> so it's a, it's a sophisticated strategy. Trump's doing actually something similar. If you look, Texas is, he's engaging with Texans and asking them for money, but he's not worried about their vote, right? He's more worried about Florida. In fact, Trump has a very Florida-focused strategy throughout. Next slide. Okay, so we're doing analytics here. You know, I'm like live streaming analytics. I could do this as a podcast. It'd be very fun, but it would miss the visual element. So those are pretty much um, straightforward visualizations. One of the things that Tableau does is it allows us to build what's called dashboards. And dashboards give you multiple um, visualizations so that you can simultaneously see things happening at the same time. Okay, so I've got my map up there, right? This is the map that shows what they're spending. It's not broken down by engagement and fundraising, but we did see this lower visualization before, right? This is um, gender and age using the different types of messages that they use. And now we can start to ask some more detailed questions, right? So if we look at the next slide, if I click on one of these states, Florida, the big green one, <clears throat> it's green incidentally, because it was money and I thought, okay, that makes sense. Um, okay, so if I click on Florida, the plot actually changed. We can see there's hardly any fundraising from Biden going on in Florida. He's not asking Floridians, Floridians for money. He's just engaging with them and he's trying to get them to go vote. And um, and Trump, on the other hand, is asking Floridians for money, but more so he's focused on getting on the vote and engaging with people. And again, we see very strongly by uh, Trump's, I'm gonna engage with older folks strategy at play in Florida. Let's look at another slide. If I click on Florida, again, it changes the view. Sorry, if I click on Pennsylvania, again, it changes the view. Biden's really engaging with voters here. He's asking for a little bit of money, mainly from women, but not much else. Um, and we can see Trump is hardly engaging with Pennsylvania at all, which is funny because you really need to win this state if you're a presidential candidate. He didn't have enough strength in some other places. Next slide. Is anybody in here into politics? A couple people. So in a way that's great because, um, because when we're exploring data, we can explore data that we're unfamiliar with. Like I could look at Jeff's credit card data and probably get some insights about the way people are using their credit cards, even if I'm not an expert. I am a domain expert, so I'm able to translate these insights into a story that fits with what happened in 2020. Here's Texas. And Texas is a big fundraising state for both people. Even though Biden lost there, he was getting a fair amount. Of, he was doing a fair amount of advertising to get funding from Texas. Um, and interestingly, neither one of them is voting much. Okay, I have some more slides. Um, go ahead and click, click, click. And so the main point to this is, is that if you're using a platform like Tableau, then you can sort of interact with the data. And it really does feel like playing because you're kind of learning something at the same time that you're just clicking around. If you take visual analytics as a, as a class, um, <clears throat> then we teach you how to use Tableau but also how to think about what's going on with the data. And we spend time teaching you how humans think, right? Like I don't always just have a tall guy stand next to me. There's other ways that we can talk about how people, how people think and perceive, right? Visual analytics is in part about what we perceive. And then as a result, you end up with this idea about what's the best visualization to help me tell the story that I wanna tell. That's a lot about what it's about. So these are the two classes that we're, that we're uh, offering. 
And if you take information visualization, then you learn a lot about R scripting. You don't have to be an R scripting expert to take the class at all. Um, it's mainly about static visualizations and we spend time learning about design elements. It's more coding and less theory is how I would say it. Analytic dashboards uses Tableau instead of R. There is a little bit of R or Python in it, but not much. It's about dashboards and dashboard design. So while we do talk a little bit about design, it's less about beautifying and more about space. Where do you put these things? <clears throat> it's more about interactive visualization and less about static visualization. And it's more theory and less code. All right, last slide. I think it's the last slide. Yes, questions. Anybody have any questions? Doesn't visualization look fun? Yes, what's your question? I have a question just about your research. I, I, just, I think it's really interesting to compare, or I don't know if the research is doing this. What was the data that existed that made the candidates spend money in the areas they did? And then what was the outcome in voting? And how you could lay those kind of three things on top of each other? Yeah, we could totally do that. <clears throat> so the question is, um, because it's in line with my own research, the question is about, you know, can we look at data outside of the data that we got, like the polling data that, um, that the campaigns used to make decisions about where to spend money, and then overlay on top of that the voting. The voting part's easy, that data is out, that data is on Wikipedia, so I could just grab it. Um, the polling data, there's a lot of polling data out there, but a lot of times campaigns actually use private pollsters. So if you remember from 2020, there was a lot of talk about how the polling was way off. Oh, sorry. 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 Got it? Somebody, okay. <clears throat> so um, how the polling was way off. And that was in part because um, they were using public pollsters and they were not covering the population very well, but the private pollsters were. So they actually had a better perspective of what's going on. Question over here. Yeah, so I have several questions from the chat. Um, how, how does geospatial data science fit into what was shown during the presentation, if at all? Yeah, so in this case, Tableau makes geospatial uh, visualization is really easy. I just used state names. But if you happen to have um, latitude and longitude for points, if your data covers different kinds of geographies, Tableau's got most of that stuff built in. It just handles it for you. Um, and it makes it easy. Easy is good. Um, another person asked if we could touch on accessibility in data visualization. Accessibility, yes. In fact, <clears throat> um, Tableau has built-in color palettes that are colorblind safe, which makes that part of it a little bit easier. And then of course, you know, these days people are adding tool tips and stuff like that. So there's ways to take your Tableau dashboards and move them over onto web pages where you'd wanna add that kind of accessibility stuff. It's a little harder with the static visualization stuff, but there are actually um, color palettes and things like that that you could add. And then if you were gonna use your data visualizations on a web page, you'd wanna add the tooltips to the forum. And we had one more from the chat. Um, for the Facebook data, you mentioned a process for coding each part of the topics, um, which were then used to generate some of the visualization. So I think they were just wondering if you could expand on that. Sure. <clears throat> we went through the sometimes um, mind numbing process of looking at hundreds and hundreds, actually thousands of ads, and then determining whether or not these ads are engagement, fundraising, or voting. A lot of times it's very easy. You just say, oh, this is definitely fundraising, right? They're, they're clearly just asking for money. But sometimes those, those, uh, the distinction between those become very challenging. And once we come up with something like three or 4,000 um, uh, 
example ads that we coded ourselves, then we train our models with those and we train them in very similar ways to what Jeff was describing. Um, so we use that gold labeled data, we hold some of it back as test data, so on and so forth. That's it for the questions in there. I think we're all set, it's 530. Any other questions before I leave? One question in the back. What in your view was the most interesting insight that came out of the Lulitic project this far? Well, a lot of it was truly fascinating. Um, actually, you know, the real thing was how clearly the data showed what pundits have been saying all along, right? Pundits have been talking about how Donald Trump was focusing on older people, how Democrats are mainly focused on women and younger people. And we just see all the things that you hear about all the time, very clearly echoed in the data. And, um, and it was really, I think one of the things that was most surprising to me was Trump's all in on Florida strategy. Like, why didn't he go for Pennsylvania? Why didn't he spend money in Arizona? <clears throat> Those things might have made a difference for his election. Thank you for the question. <laughs>